Alexander the Great working with demons to build the Great Wall, to hold back Og and Magog. With an air of sarcasm, the descendants of Magog were known as Scythia Magogia. The Scythian nobility and the Scythian people separated, giving rise to the army and empire of Alexander. An army formed to destroy the Scandinavian people's revolt. There are two problems here. One is visual. Upon the brow of Alexander, there is a Scythian headdress. The very same headdress belonging to the tribes Alexander is allegedly holding back. The second is that Alexander is openly working with demons. The demons in Babylon were depicted with bird feet, the wings of an eagle, the mane of a horse, and the face of a lion known more broadly as the Seven. The leader of whom is Sin, Suen, Lord Zu. The original name for Sin, which is not used, is Dilim Baba, the White Devil. If Baba refers to the noise, and Dilim means white, then here we have the ancient rendering of Dilim Baba, white noise. It is a deceptive, possessing demon spirit, and oddly enough, Alexander was perceived by the ancient Greeks as being Zeus personified. I think we are told clearly. I believe possession is the only way one can become a deity, to become a god in the flesh. Similar to Zeus, who is always connected to the pantheon, all the divinities fall from the divine storm bird, who is a shape-shifting deceiver. The god Zeus was originally the lion-faced god, known as Aya or Jove, and Phobos, the lion-faced god, was the precursor to Medusa. If the son of Phobos is Phaeton, then Phobos must be equated with Zeus. You see Medusa, but I see what the lion accomplished. We also see the effects of the comet and the new fauna brought by the red clay. When the comet fell 54 million years ago, new fauna arrived, the long grasses arrived, the source of DMT. New predators arrived and many things grew to a titanic size. This is where we get the fertility and death aspects. How the mother goddess was divided. How the male become one with the female. Through cataclysm, opportunity arises.
an inscription from the soldiers of Alexander. The Bone Chapel was built in his honor, giving rise to a connection to the Egyptian lion-faced god, Shazmu, the god of wine. Wine in the Egyptian context being symbolic for blood. Shazmu was formerly the demon protector of Ra. Shazmu was the precursor to Tehut, and Tehut is Ra personified. This may be why Tehut is the balancing force, quite simply because he is both. I highly recommend the month of martyrdom, the month of Tehut. Similar to Phobos, the head is the main element. Marduk and the Seven, with the enemies of Lagash in their beaks. the god of wine. Here we have a connection to Enoch and Noah with the vineyards of God. Biblically, this would be wine, the wine press of God, a metaphor referring to the blood of Jesus or the innocent when he or they were part of the vineyard. The vineyard possibly being symbolic of the crucifixion. There will be vineyards, says Enoch, and in the Midrash, Noah drank from the vineyards, specifically planted by a demon, the wise King Solomon, often drank strong wine but also openly worked with demons, the same demons as Alexander, the builders, the children of renown. Proverb 21 Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The angel of the Lord saith, You are told, but you do not listen. For the rest of King Solomon's days are tormented by the demons he worked with. Alexander believed he was the lion-faced god in the flesh, and openly worked with the Supreme White One. In Egypt, the white Anubis was the embodiment of the invading forces with whom Tehut was closely associated. After this invasion, we have the rise of the pharaohs. At the very same time in Akkad, Sin rises to the head of the Akkadian pantheon, in both regions referring to the god of the moon. Before we continue to Og and Magog, the Scythian Egyptian god is the dogman of Canaan. In the north, he is a wolf. In the south, he is the dogman. The land of Ur can also mean the land of the wolf, because Ur in Sumerian can mean wolf. 
connected to uh, Aya, which is lamentation, tears. Tears in Sumerian is Aya, which would be the curse of the wolf. Aya and Zeus. Zeus Lyacon. Wolf Zeus. The Library of Alexander was formed with manuscripts discovered in the tomb of Hermes, who is equated with Tehut, originally being Shesmu. Alexander and the Wall Two chapters of the Quran Al-Kaf and Al-Anbaya Discuss Gog and Magog Gog and Magog Are suppressed by Duhul Kwanayan The Two Horned One Traditionally regarded as Alexander the Great Duhul Kwanayan, having journeyed to the ends of the world, he meets a people who scarcely understood a word, who seek his help in building a barrier that will separate them from the people of Yajuj and Majuj, who do great mischief on the earth. Correct me if I am wrong, but Hermes is the god of mischief. He agrees to build the wall for them, but warns when the time comes, for example the last age, Allah will remove the barrier. Al is a temptation demon, A means of men. Allah could mean deceiver of man, but Alexander is the deceiver and it is the empire that will remove the barrier, allowing Magog to reign supreme. The early Muslim traditions were summarized by Zachariah al quazini in 1283 in two popular works called the Cosmography and the geography. Gog and Magog, he says, live near to the sea that encircles the earth and can only be counted by God, which is claimed to be the Caspian Sea, the Black Sea, or the Sea of Azov. In Norse mythology, after defeating the Frost Giants, he condemns them to live beyond the Sea of Ice that encircles the Earth. I believe that is Antarctica, the Flat Earth or the Sphere, the wall that divided. The truth was divided. Maybe we should put those two concepts together. similar to a Hunger Games scenario. The description for Gog and Magog is very odd. We are told they are giants, but here they are human, and only half the height of a normal man. Small eyes, similar to the Mongols, with claws instead of nails, and a hairy tail, and huge hairy ears, which they use as a mattress and cover for sleeping. 
They dig into their wall each day until they almost break through. They break for the night, saying tomorrow we will finish. And each night God restores it. Then one day as they stop digging for the night, one will say, One day we will finish, God willing. And in the morning it is not restored, as with every night. When they refer to God building the wall every night, on one side there is Magog, on the other, the seven demons. The demons built the wall. Who is the vague term God referring to? It refers to the builder of the wall. When they do break through, they will be so numerous that their vanguard is in Syria and their rear in Khorashan. According to Shia sources, Yezhuzh and Majuzh are not from the children of Adam, the human race. However, in other sources, they are described as small-eyed humans. Al-Kafi, one of the primary collections of Ahadith, states that it had been narrated by Ibn Abbas, that when he questioned Ali about the creatures, He responded by saying, God has created 1,200 species on land, 1,200 species in the sea, 70 species from the children of Adam, and the people are the children of Adam, except for Yezhuzh and Majuzh. 70 species from Adam. Excuse me, if we add Adam and Eve, we get 72 species. We are told through sin, Adam created male demons, and Eve female demons. In so many words, we are told, Adam and Eve created the Goatia. The 73rd would be sin. The Hidden One. The narration from Ibn Abbas is in contradiction with many reports in Sunni sources, including those in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, which indicate that they will indeed be from the children of Adam. And this is the belief of the overwhelming majority of Islamic scholars. None of this takes away the fact that Alexander, among many others, were openly working with demons. Context and reason do not matter. If the sin of Adam created male demons, and Eve created female demons, and both together are progenitors of mankind, could Adam and Eve be the claws of the scorpion, Libra? The scorpion is the serpent. The serpent is the balancing point, and the scales are the claws of the scorpion, the oldest sign, the first constellation to be brought to life, possibly due to it being the origin of the first cataclysm, 
the first constellation to have a fallen heart, an Omicron. I believe the gate is the cataclysm. From the meteor, we learnt the secret of life, the secret of steel, and possibly the origin of the Globus Krugiger, which is Latin for cross-bearing orb. The events of the meteor could possibly create a sphere-like communicator. What we have is a shard of a tidally disrupted planet, irradiated by the sun, crashing through our atmosphere, followed by intense oxidization, heating up as it fell to the earth, spinning with force, possibly forming geometric patterns within its hot molten core, crashing into the iced waters, creating a sphere of tempered metal. You may think I'm off my trolley. Oddly enough, I would agree. But after writing this, I seek and I find this. Ka'og Itor, the angel shard. Og, it, and meteor. Ka'og Itor. Kogito aims to develop a spherical liquid cybernetic system that can be used in extreme environments or another planet. It is a liquid cybernetic sphere-like communicator. This may be how demons communicate, similar to the crystal ball. The written word is also a concern as geometric patterns omit a frequency, as does the spoken word, all of which is attributed to the god of language, who is also the divider of language. To divide, to twin, to double, to low, to multiply the frequencies or geometric patterns, who is Alexander working with? Not who, but what?